All right, welcome back. In this video, we will program the pipes, the obstacles that Flappy has to avoid in order to score points. So here's how this is going to go. Because Flappy always stays on the same vertical line, clones of this pipe sprite will start appearing from the right edge of the stage and they will slowly move towards Flappy until they disappear at the left edge of the stage. So we will program this pipe sprite to generate clones every couple of seconds and each one of those clones will have a different costume so that we make the game a little more challenging and the clones will start in the right and will glide to the left. If Flappy crashes into them, the game is restarted, much like we did with the ground sprite in the last video. So let me start. I'm going to click on this pipe sprite and I'm going to go to events and I'm going to bring in this when flag click block. So when the flag is clicked, first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this pipe because I don't want it to be visible at the very start of the game. So I'm just going to hide this. I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to bring in the hide block. Now, when we click the start game button, we would like to make this pipe sprite generate clones of itself every other second. All right, so here's what I'm gonna go. When I receive the message generated by the start game sprite, which is start game, all right, I'm going to make the pipe create clones of itself. So I'm going to go to events and then bring in the when I receive start game. All right. Now, when I receive start game, I am going to bring in a forever loop. And I'm going to wait a couple of seconds. And after waiting, I'm going to create a clone. Now, what are clones supposed to do? Well, when a clone starts, so when I start as a clone, first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show it because the original sprite is hidden. So I'm going to go to the looks and I'm going to bring in the show block. Then I'm going to make the clone appear on the right edge of the stage. And then I'm going to make it glide slowly towards the left edge of the stage. So I'm going to go to motion and I'm going to say go to X and I'm going to set X to 240, which is the right edge of the stage and Y equals zero. So center it vertically. All right, then make it glide all the way to the left. So I'm going to bring in from the control section. I'm going to bring in a repeat until much like we did with the ground sprite. So I'm going to go to operators going to bring in the less than operator then I'm going to go to motion and I'm going to bring in this X position and I'm going to bring it in into the first space of the operator and on the other space I'm going to say negative 236 then inside I'm going to bring in a change X by block and I'm going to bring in a negative value so that the sprite the pipe sprite will move towards the left you remember, changing x by a negative value will move the sprite towards the left. And I've set this value to be negative 3, which is the exact same amount by which the ground moves towards the left, if you remember from a couple of videos ago. All right. So if I hit the flag now and notice the pipe has disappeared, if I hit the start button, clones of the pipe sprite will start to appear on the screen. So I'm going to hit the start and see what's happening. So we have Flappy in the air and pipes are starting to appear on the screen. Obviously Flappy goes through them because we haven't implemented crashing yet, but notice that pipes are gathering towards the left edge of the stage because we aren't deleting them from the screen. So let me stop the game and let me add at this at the end of this script starting with when I start as a clone to delete the clone when it reaches the edge of the stage. So I'm going to go to control and I'm going to add delete this clone. So let's start the game again. So start. Floppy in the air, pipes getting generated and I'm expecting that pipes will be deleted. Nice. 
But notice one more thing. Pipes are being drawn on top of everything else, even on top of the ground sprite. And I don't really like that. I'm going to bring in some more blocks from the look section. Actually, I'm going to bring in just one. I'm going to bring this go to layer. So go to the back layer, which makes every other sprite drawn on top of this one if they overlap. So if I hit the flag again, notice the difference. The pipes are being drawn last behind the ground sprite and even behind Flappy, which is great. Flappy looks great now. Now there are a couple more things that we need to do with obstacles. Let's start with implementing the crashing mechanisms. So Flappy can crash into one of these pipes and if it does, a new game will be triggered. Fortunately, most of the programming is done in the Flappy sprite. So if Flappy crashes into, where's the script? If Flappy crashes into the ground, so if it touches the ground, Flappy will stop and it will broadcast this new game message. So all we need to do is change this little script to say wait until touching the ground or touching the pipe and then all the new game mechanism will be triggered. So I'm going to go to operators and I'm going to bring in this or operator and I'm going to put touching ground in the first space and I'm going to right click and duplicate it and I'm going to put it again in the other space and select pipe. All right, so we have the green block saying touching the ground or touching the pipe. So I'm going to snap it in the diamond shaped space in the wait until block. So let's hit the flag and see what's happening now. So we have Flappy floating away gracefully. And when I hit the start button, I have Flappy in the air. And let me crash into one of these pipes. So Flappy along with the start button and the title appear nicely on screen, but all these clones for the pipe are still being generated, which is something that I don't want. I want all the clones to disappear and allow me to start another game. So let me stop. So when Flappy crashes, it broadcasts this new game message, which we will need the pipe to handle. So I'm going to click on the pipe and then go to events and then I'm going to add a when I receive new game message. And when I receive new game, I need to stop all the other scripts because I want to stop the generation of more clones and I want to stop the clones from progressing towards the left edge of the stage. So I'm going to go to control and I'm going to bring in the stop block and I'm going to select other scripts in the sprite. Now, after I've stopped all the other scripts, I wouldn't really like the clone to disappear all of a sudden off of the screen. That wouldn't really look too good. So I'd like to make the disappearance a little more gentle. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring in a repeat. And I'm going to make the clone glide just a little bit more to the left. So over 10 repetitions, not too much. So I'm going to duplicate this change X by negative three, and I'm going to snap it inside. All right. And I'm going to bring yet another repeat block in which I'm going to make the clone still glide a little bit more to the left and fade out. All right. So make the clone disappear. So I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to change the ghost effect, but I'd like the clone to disappear a little more quickly. So repeat five instead of repeat 10, and I'm going to change the ghost effect by 20. All right, and I'm still going to duplicate this change X by negative three block, because as the clone fades out, I would still like it to be moving, not stop and fade out, all right? So when I receive new game, I'm going to stop all the other scripts and then I'm going to glide to the left a little bit and then fade out and glide to the left a little bit. And finally, at the end, I would like to delete the clone altogether. All right, because it has already faded out. So I'm going to delete this clone. So let me hit the flag and see the effect of that. So I have Flappy. I'm going to hit the start button, but no clones seem to be generated, which is Oh, they are generated because I've just crashed into them. So the clones must be invisible. Now there is a reason for that. Remember that when we click the flag, 
the start button immediately broadcasts the new game message. Well, we have a handler here, a script, in the pipe sprite that is able to receive the new game message. So the original pipe sprite receives the new game message, stops the other scripts in the sprite, moves to the left a little bit, moves to the left a little bit more, and changes its transparency effect. So even as the pipe sprite, the original sprite, is being hidden, as we click the flag, it's also transparent. So that when we hit the start button, and it starts generating clones, all of those clones are also transparent. Which explains what we saw on the stage. All of the clones are being generated already transparent. Alright, so let me fix that. I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to clear the graphic effects when I receive the start game message so that the original sprite, even as it's being hidden, has no graphic effects applied to it so that the clones can be generated without the transparency effect. Let me hit the flag again and let me hit the start button again. So notice that the clones are being generated correctly now and Flappy is able to crash into them and the game is able to restart. And if I hit the start button again, new clones are going to be generated and Flappy is able to crash into them again and so on and so forth. Now there are a couple more things that we need for the obstacles. We are almost done. We need to make the obstacles generate the scoring of a point when Flappy passes them or rather they pass Flappy because Flappy stays in the same place. So let me do that. I'm going to go to control and I'm going to add another script for the clone. So starting with when I start as a clone. So I'm going to move these scripts around a little bit and I'm going to add another script starting with when I start as a clone. Remember, when we have multiple scripts starting with the same thing, all of them are being executed at the same time. So if I add another script starting with when I start as a clone, both of these scripts will be executed simultaneously. So let me add a wait block. So this other script will wait until the position of the clone is less than the horizontal position of Flappy. So when the clone passes Flappy, we need to register a point. So I'm going to go to operators and I'm going to bring in this less than operator. So I'm going to check whether the X position of this clone is less than the X position of Flappy, which is negative 80 as we set it up at the beginning. All right. So I'm going to wait until, and I'm going to go to motion, and I'm going to bring in the value of the X position and is less than negative 80, which is the position of Flappy. Then we need to create a variable called score that we need to increment here. All right, so I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to go to variables, make a variable, and I'm going to name this score for all the sprites. And I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to make Flappy increase its score. Now, how do we tell a sprite to do something? Well, you got it we broadcast a message. So I'm going to go to events and I'm going to broadcast and I'm going to create a new message, say score point. All right. And Flappy will receive that message and I'm going to add a when I receive block. So when I receive score point, I'm going to make Flappy play a little sound, which sounds like victory like this. So I'm going to put it here and I'm going to increase the score. So I'm going to go to variables and I'm going to change score by one. Obviously when we start the game, so when we receive new game, where is that? So when I receive new game, we need to set score back to zero. So I'm going to add setting the score to zero when we receive new game. So let me hit the flag again and let's play a little bit. So we see here the score is zero and obstacles will start becoming generated. All right, 
So we're scoring our first point. Good, let's crash. As you can see, the score has reset back to zero and we're ready to start a new game. Now, you probably noticed that all the pipes have the same costume, and I'd like to fix that. Let's make the clones have a random costume when they start out. So I'm going to modify this script here with the show and go the back layer, go to the back layer. I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to switch costume to and inside I'm going to pick a random number from one to five because I have five possible costumes. So I'm going to go to operators and I'm going to bring this block pick random one to five. All right. And I'm going to snap it inside here. So this will switch the costume number to a random number from one to five, which is a random costume from the five that we currently have. So let's see the effect of that. I'm hitting the flag again and hitting the start button again. So notice that now the clones have different costumes. And at this point, we actually have a game. And if we crash, everything restarts and I'm ready to start a new game. This is actually quite fun. Good. This looks great. I'm really, really happy. And I'm really proud of the progress that we made together in this chapter. So join me in the next video as we polish out this game and we end up displaying the scores with the last sprite that we haven't programmed yet.